Let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Thrasher's Paradise. And today we got a very, very special guest. Personally, one of my favorite Californian thrash, well, metal bands, I'd say. I'm joined with Derek. He's the bass player, or no, drummer, not bass player. Oh, no. <laughs> Crash that. <laughs> drummer. Uh, <laughs> the drummer of Blessed Curse. Derek, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, Colin, how you doing? <laughs> Doing pretty good, man. Nice. <laughs> no. So, I was very surprised to find out that you guys have, well, the band has been around since 2001, and you yeah. only have two, well, I don't know, you have two releases under the Blessed Curse name, but in total, mm -hmm. how many do you have? Uh, let's see, we got um, the first EP, which uh, came out under the name Atrocity. Uh, that was 2005, and then we had two um, Devastator releases, which were um, both EPs, and those were put out uh, kind of like a more official kind of uh, like format. You know, it had like some nice pressings and stuff like that with uh, available on CD and digital. And then we had a another EP that was put out under Devastator. Uh, between those two, which was more just like a DIY kind of uh, release. It was an EP uh, called Slaughtered Like Pigs. And uh, that one featured um, us recording in the old practice room of uh, a Bay Area band called Hatchet. They're, uh, they're a thrash band out of there. And at the time, uh, their then drummer was uh, uh, into audio recording and stuff like that, like that too. And he ended up uh, recording us just because he was uh, looking to, I guess, uh, get some chops down on the recording department and all that. And they had a, a rehearsal room to uh, help us out with. So that was really cool. And then um, after the Devastator name change to Blessed Curse, we then put out the uh, 2017 EP. And then before that, the uh, 2012 full length release. Uh, yes. Help. Yeah. The, uh, so, I don't know how many that is, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost count. Yeah, it's I like think seven we're at, or eight? yeah seven or well, at least six or five EPs. Yeah, it's been a lot. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot. lot releases. Yeah, I know. So, what inspired the name change to Blessed Curse? Well, um, at at the time we were running with Devastator and uh, Tyler, our uh, frontman, guitar player, singer, uh, songwriter guy. Uh, he really, um, he really liked the name Devastator, and we all thought it was cool too. But there was a band out of Florida using that name, who are more of a death metal band, and I'm not sure if they're still going or not. But we had uh, changed the name from Atrocity because there is a uh, German uh, kind of like death metal band called Atrocity, who we uh, reached out to and asked them um, way back if they were cool with us using the name and they said, um, you know, like it's too similar to theirs, even though there was a spelling change that we did, we used an S instead of a C in atrocity, but, uh, they didn't, they didn't go for that. So we we're like, okay, whatever, we'll change it to devastator. And then we found out later on that the Florida band had the name devastator. So we're in the market for a new name again. And once again, Tyler came up with the uh, name, uh, blessed curse because he felt like it was a cool kind of uh generalized um uh, viewpoint of the like the world like and also of the music industry in particular you know there's there's a lot of ups but then there's also that equal kind of like downs and stuff like that so yeah we just went with that after that <laughs> <laughs> excellent yeah i know right awesome. so how much how much touring have you as a band done across your country or even the continent well uh, we have done um technically four tours um two west coast runs which no actually never mind uh three west coast runs uh one when i was not in the band um and then two while i was in the band um and then a uh the band did a full uh, u.s tour uh, which was about, I think, a month or so. But other than that, we haven't played outside of the States yet. Um, while I was out of the band for a while, they were going to play 
Mexico, I believe. Um, but that kind of fell through. I don't, I'm not really up to date on why that fell through um, as far as maybe like the show got canceled or the promoter just wasn't able to get contacted or something while they're down there. But yeah, they, they took a trip down to um, San Diego, California, which is really close to the border of Mexico. And that show ended up being canceled, but they couldn't find out until they actually got to San Diego. Oh yeah. So it was a long drive and all that, but they then, for some reason, weren't able to get into Mexico after that. Um, not quite sure what the details are on that one. I can ask, oh. like, one of these days. Yeah, I don't think there was anything, like, super bad or anything like that. It was just, for whatever reason, it, they couldn't make it happen. That's weird, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, so this this is a story I do want to tell you. When I was... 17 i want to say or 18 i think it was 17 but anyways i'm from a town i'm from a city like an hour outside of toronto Mm -hmm. and i went to one of our record stores inside of our mall and i happened to found the ep under blessed curse there Mm -hmm. yeah and i purchased it immediately like oh this looks like a cool album artwork and fell in love with it and i just found it funny now doing all the research and it's just like wow this is very very cool that i was able to find this hidden gem inside like a somewhat large record store in canada yeah i i could only really attribute that to uh the distribution that it got um i do believe it was through cd baby and also the uh small uh, record label that put it out called uh, M Theory Audio. So uh, it looks like they were able to pull some strings and get it out of out of the states, which is great, you know. And have you gotten much feedback from people outside of the USA? Actually, um, I'd say it's about fifty fifty. We've gotten feedback from people inside the US and then worldwide also. Um, and for the most part, it seems genuinely pretty positive. Regarding the uh, Beware the Night EP release in 2017, people seem to really like it, and um, for me, that's that's a nice uh, little uh, like pat on the back kind of thing, because um, at the time it was it was kind of like a, a recharger engines uh, period before putting out the EP. We uh, we spent a lot of time rehearsing, like almost. God, I, I don't even know how many like weekends we spent just rehearsing at our um, now guitar player's uh, house at the time. Um, yeah, it, it was a long time. It was probably about a year or two of just straight rehearsing and then starting to play a little local shows here and there. But then we um, we went into the studio with a uh, with a producer named Juan Ortiaga who. Um, who we worked with previously on the Burn the Beast EP under the Devastator name, as well as the uh, self-titled Blessed Curse album. So we had a little history with him, and we were able to get in there and put out the 2017 EP, which was really cool. You know, it, I thought it sounded like probably the best production um, as far as the experience in the studio and the end result. Um, we were all really prepared to put that out as far as uh, knowing the songs and being up on our chops and all that stuff. So it felt really good getting it out. And uh, we were able to get our uh, little bit of promo out of it as far as like the um, uh, lyric video for Nightbreed, which was featured on that one. And that was really cool too, because that was like our first like kind of video thing that was like professionally done. So yeah, that was pretty cool. (laughs) Excellent. Now, Timeline of Blessed Curse. In 2002, you released the self-titled album. 2017, I, you released your EP, Beware of the Night. It's 2020. It's been a couple years since yeah. <laughs> Beware, of the Night, Beware of the Night has come out. I think you know what I'm about to ask you. Yeah, uh, what's the hold up? <laughs> well, not even that. Just when can we anticipate at least maybe a single of new material? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, speaking of which, um, the whole debacle right now with the music industry is really like, okay, how do we, as a band, um, pretty much uh, 
been self-funded for the most part until we started working with M3 Audio, which is over now. The uh, the contract ran out, and uh, we are now self-funded again, a hundred percent. You know, and we want to put out new music, but we're trying to think of a way to put it out to make it the most effective. And as of right now, uh, we're throwing around the idea of doing uh, an e- another EP. I know it's like, oh, wow, another EP kind of thing. But it, during this like period of the music industry and the climate and all that, it's really, um, it's really difficult for bands to justify putting out full-length albums unless they have a lot of backing behind them. And even then, they're still scratching their heads as to how to make those albums the most effective releases they possibly can by i know a lot of bands are divvying up their uh the songs on the albums and doing a ton of like music videos like almost every song on the album will have a video like uh, i think metallica did that with their last album and maybe testament's doing that with their newest one um but we are shooting around the ideas of doing like a a single kind of thing like going in there and maybe piecing together like a compilation of singles or just going in there and doing like an EP kind of thing because of not only the the budget for an EP is a lot less than you need for an album, but it, it's almost more cost effective to do a shorter um, bunch of songs or even like singles at this point than putting out a full length album that um, in the digital download streaming age, like people tend to gravitate towards individual songs and not sitting down and spinning whole records and stuff like that. So we are shooting for um, something as soon as possible. Um, we don't have any like dates set in stone or anything like that, but personally, I'd like to get something out maybe next year um, as far as like a brand new music and new release and all that stuff. Excellent. Now yeah. with the, oh. no. with. Now, with all this whole debacle, as you mentioned, going on and everything just being put on hold, kind of, does that kind of like go bring in a light bulb into your like writing mindset for creating new maybe time signatures for any future works? Um, not necessarily. Beyond the fact that once like this virus stuff kind of dies down with the corona and all that. Um, all the, all the legacy acts and all of the, uh, the signed acts are going to get their lion's share of like touring opportunities and gig opportunities because they have like big time bookers and stuff like that. And they have contracts and they have like a lot of resources to, um, get hooked up with, um, the venues and stuff like that. So with that in mind, we're thinking, you know, if we can get some uh, gigs booked and and they don't fall through because of the virus stuff, um, you know, maybe shoot for the end of the year with some gigs. But we really want to be trying to utilize this downtime to uh, write and be productive, even though we're all doing like the self-isolation stuff as much as possible and not able to really meet up and rehearse or even like just meet up and chat about stuff it's all it's all online or over the phone or whatever so you know we're, we're gonna try and just play it by ear right now and hopefully get something out as soon as we possibly can awesome with this whole thing going on do you as a band collector do you feel it's now the time to kind of like promote yourselves on the social medias as much as you can yeah, I, I feel like if you got the social media stuff, like the YouTubes, the you know Facebooks, Instagrams, and all that, and or whatever else is out there, I'm sure there's tons more out there. Whatever you can do during this downtime, you might as well take advantage of it, you know. And the the internet's pretty much the new radio anyway, like old school FM, AM radio, and all that. So you might as well do what you can while you can, because um, I know the other three quarters of my band. Um, they're all isolating for the most part um, and not able to work. While it's kind of ironic that I got hired at a uh, Home Depot. It's like a uh, it's like a hardware uh, like hardware store, like big warehouse store, like the week before this virus stuff hit. So 
I'm one of those essential businesses that is uh, uh, working right now. So I'm actually like jam packed every week doing like 40 hours a week. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> that is really odd because as of today, all of our Home Depots in Canada just closed down. Did they? Uh oh, yes. that doesn't spell bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. My parents went to Home Depot yesterday because of it, just to pick up a few last minute things. It took them almost two, I want to say two hours to get back home. Oh, wow. Wow. Everybody's wow. going out there then for the big shutdown. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we I, up here, we have it limited to like only 10 people in the physical store. Oh, wow. That's so much different from where I'm at. It's, uh, they're letting in 150 people in the store at any one time. Wow. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is like how much people would normally be in here, you know, yeah. before all this virus stuff. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what their plan is as far as the, uh, like stores staying open or anything. Cause they're calling it essential like shopping, but I know a lot of people are just going in there because they're bored and want to do some like DIY home projects and stuff. So <laughs> I mean, what else is there to do? I know, right? Like, you need to paint a room, go to Home Depot and get some paint. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that, that's too funny. No, uh, so, a lot, okay, I figured out what I was going to ask again. Save All myself. Right. Perfect. Right. Now, a lot of bands have been doing either live stream concerts or just live stream Q&As and mm, a lot yeah. Have blessed Kurt, have you and your band members talked about maybe doing a live stream Q and A just from your own homes? Uh, yeah, I was actually bringing that up. I think a week or two ago uh, with uh, Tyler. Um, I was talking to him about that because we like to try and like plan ahead a little bit and you know like get the groundwork covered for maybe like a week or two in advance when it comes to like band stuff. But um, I was I was more like thinking like doing like a. Uh, like a rehearsal kind of thing, you know, okay. like, where we can do like playing our instruments and stuff, like all via like like Skype or like uh, like FaceTime or something or whatever, you know. And uh, um, the idea kind of fell through just because it was just like it's and, and people just <laughs> didn't want to do it. But I would be open to doing like a Q and A kind of thing and just like chatting with people and stuff like that. Um, I think the, the logistics of doing a uh, like live performance kind of thing with people in different locations, you know, all like connecting their uh, their devices to each other and stuff like that while playing. I hear there's like a lot of like latency with that um, as far as like trying to like sync up like actually playing music and stuff. But at least as far as having conversations with people and just chatting, like doing like, you know, hey, get to meet the band kind of thing or whatever. I think that would be definitely doable, and I'm totally open to the, uh, to the idea. I just got to get the other guys on board. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, I want to ask this because I feel the urge to ask this. How much do you miss kind of being able to just go out? Uh, well, for me, it's not that bad because I'm doing like the 40 hours a week at the Home Depot and all that, so it's almost like – it's more the downtime that I, I don't get to go out and I don't get to uh, just like mingle with the rest of the people around here. So that's a little bit different, but I know for the, the people who are self isolating and aren't working right now, they're starting to get kind of like stir crazy and get like cabin fever. So they're trying to like get out and get some walks in and stuff like that and get some exercise outside. But other than that, they're, they're getting pretty bored and, trying to like be productive like if you're like working from home or whatever and you're still supposed to be doing work it's hard to uh it's hard to stay busy and keep on a schedule and all that while you're isolated and stuff so yeah um hopefully i won't know what that's like hopefully the job keeps going but uh we'll have to see <laughs> here's hoping to you yeah now. exactly <laughs> I'm going to ask you one last question. It's a question we ask everyone that comes on the channel. I just need to know who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's a hard one because Lemmy is God, right? <laughs> yes, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. Derek, thank you so much for coming on Thrasher's Paradise. The, the, if I can say my own channel's name right, wow. 
thanks for coming on Thrasher's Paradise today. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the people at home watching this on YouTube? Uh, stay safe out there. Uh, the virus stuff will be over soon. So uh, keep your heads down and we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Excellent. Make sure to follow Blessed Curse on all their social medias and check them out on all streaming platforms, especially Spotify and Bandcamp. Yeah, and until cool. next that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be a big help. It would be. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> until next time, keep on thrashing. <laughs>